Ha! Good morning, everyone. Did I surprise you? What's going on? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Level 1 Podcast. Sorry about that. <laughs> today is, sorry, today is Monday, the 21st of August, 2023. How is everyone today? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the more chill, relaxing show before my weekly react show. Um, although, admittedly, it's not the usual day of the react show. Usually we do the react show on Sundays. This week was a little different because we were making room for the Mortal Kombat 1 beta, which then ended up not being very good. So I only played it one day. So technically, I could have done the react show on Sunday. But since I had already announced that it was going to be bumped to Monday, it didn't make sense to do it on Sunday. Because then people who came on Sunday might have been disappointed because they had already scheduled that they'd be there for Monday for the react show. And then if I did it impromptu, people would have missed it. And a lot of people pay to become members and subscribers. And they wanted to have their videos watched. And if they're not there live, they would have been disappointed if they missed the show live. So I didn't want to change it back. So anyway, how is it going today? I hope that it's going well for you. <laughs> and uh, hope that you're ready to relax here on DSP Gaming. So, what are we doing today? Well, today is a more laid-back show. Um, we do have a few news stories to cover, and we do have a few things to discuss. I think I might minorly tweak the schedule. Oh, so little bit. But uh, today, this morning, is a day of loading. And what I mean by that is I am preloading multiple games onto my Xbox Series X to prepare for the busy fall gaming season. <clears throat> Excuse me. In fact, it is official that as of yesterday, uh, I would say that yesterday, August 20th, was the season finale of my summer of Street Fighter VI, <laughs> which definitely was interesting. Um, I don't think that anyone really just a few months ago could have predicted that Street Fighter VI would have been such a hit, such a good game, and that I would have invested as much time and effort into it as I have, getting as good at it as I have, you know? Like, I don't think people would have foreseen that. It's been over a decade since the last time I actually tried to seriously invest time and effort into being good at fighting games. And it's happened, you know, with Street Fighter VI. So I'm very pleased with how it went. However, officially starting this week is the beginning of all of the fall new game releases. For example, this Friday, we've got Armored Core 6. One week after that, we've got Starfield. Just a couple weeks after that, we've got Lies of P and Mortal Kombat 1. So with all of those new releases coming within the next two, three weeks, etc., obviously, I'm going to need a lot more time to focus on the hot new releases of the fall. That's what you guys want to see. You know, you come to DSP Gaming for variety content, not just to see fighting games all day long, and I understand that. A lot of people have been a little bit upset that I played so many fighting games over the summer. Um, it certainly served its purpose, you know? Usually the summers are very slow, with not much going on in the realm of gaming, and I end up playing a ton of retro stuff and a lot of downtime filler, and this year was the opposite. This year, I had more than enough to go around because Street Fighter VI took up such so much of my time, and just to kind of summarize, I haven't even really covered Street Fighter 6 in its entirety yet. I've only used, what is it, like 12 of the characters? There's certain characters I've literally never used once yet. Um, I haven't gotten through World Tour Mode. We're trying. We are slowly doing World Tour Mode, which is the story mode of the game. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies today are annoying. Uh, all night, I had post-nasal drip, and I woke up this morning, my throat was gunked up. I'm like, ugh. So I, if I sound gross today and I'm clearing my throat or whatever, that's what's going on. It really sucks. <clears throat> and obviously, I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, like even having played Street Fighter Six as much as I did this summer, we still didn't really fully cover it and, and, and show off the game fully. You know, I, I ended up, <clears throat> over time kind of honing in on certain characters and liking them more than others. But if you take a look, I've barely touched the top tier, right? If you take a look at the top tier of the game, the only top tier character I'm even actively using at all is Luke. You know, everyone else is mid to low tier. Um, so, yeah, you know, I listen. I really enjoyed it, but the truth is that it is time to move on. I'm not giving up on Street Fighter Six or anything like that. It's just that I realize that now that we're heading into the fall, as much as I'm enjoying Street Fighter VI, okay, because I am, I'm really having a good time with it, um, I definitely feel like 
we need to move on to the new releases. And it's time for that. And that's starting this week on Friday and moving forward. Okay? So, yeah. The summer of Street Fighter VI is officially closed as of now. I'm pronouncing the Street Fighter VI festivities are officially over. Not to say that I'm retiring the game. I'm not. But you're going to see less less of it. Excuse me. <clears throat> and I know for some of you, you're going to be like, yes, this is great. And others will be like, oh, I kind of liked that summer of fighting games. But, you know, don't worry. Fighting games are certainly not taking a backseat. I will continue to play Street Fighter VI. There's Mortal Kombat 1 coming out. Tekken 8, it looks like we'll get a release date soon. As, as soon as tomorrow. Tomorrow is that Gamescom Live, which is that European game show. And there's a lot of games that apparently are going to be doing presentations there. Tekken 8 is one of them. And people are speculating they will finally announce their release date uh, tomorrow. So that'll be interesting to see when the third major fighting game franchise will get its release this year. Okay, so, good stuff. Thank you for joining me for the summer of Street Fighter. But it is now time to move forward positively into the very busy gaming season. So yeah, right now, the big Starfield update is updating on my Xbox. I haven't had my Xbox plugged into the internet since last week. So, Starfield started preloading. So now, there you go. This is like 100 gigs on Xbox. And uh, Armor Core 6 is on there too. And that's about to start preloading any moment now. So, uh, all this stuff getting ready for all these new releases coming, right? <clears throat> Pretty cool. <clears throat> um, so, shall we talk about that? What, what should we do first? I guess, here's what we'll do. Let's recap Street Fighter to kind of, you know, see, see how I've done. And then let's talk about the schedule. And then let's do some gaming news and then we'll move on from there, okay? So, Street Fighter, alright? Uh, yesterday was a major session of me playing ranked matches with E-Honda in uh, Diamond Level. <clears throat> and the interesting thing about this was, when I'd been playing with E-Honda on Xbox, I'd only done one ranked session with him. And I had started with E-Honda way back when, when the game had first come out. And just doing my placement matches, I was dominating people, and I ended up getting one-star Diamond ranking, the highest placement ranking I had gotten in the game at that point. And it was weird because I never played Honda again for like two months. And I was like, dude, if I ever go back to Honda, I'm just going to get spanked. Like, because I haven't used them in two months. I don't really know what I'm doing. I know I'm going to get destroyed at diamond level. And then when basically I went back to use him, I watched some videos of top level Hondas and how they were playing. And I practiced a few casual matches. I went into ranked and I started winning. I did one session of ranked diamond with Honda. And I went from one star diamond all the way up to three star diamond. I was like, holy shit, I'm, I'm actually doing really well. With a character I've barely touched. He just must be my, my style of character or whatever in this game. Uh, so that was really cool. And then I swapped from Xbox to PlayStation 5 and it reset all the ranks. I was like, well, so it was really nice that I had that really good stream or day of Honda. But it kind of reset everything. So how will I do now? Really good. So I played with Honda. I ended up placing 3-star Platinum, which is stupid. I should have placed higher, but the, the, the placings in this game were changed and now they're dumb. Um, so I grinded through Platinum, and then yesterday I did my Diamond session, essentially, and we got from 2-star Diamond all the way up to 4-star Diamond in one session of 3 hours of gameplay. It ended up being about roughly around 80 matches again. Uh, I got 52 wins and 26 losses, so that is right. I actually got twice as many wins than losses playing with Honda yesterday. It, for a 67% win-loss ratio, which is great. That's a great ratio. Um, and now my Honda is poised within another few streams to hit master ranking, which I really do feel like it's just a matter of time at this point. There doesn't seem to be too much holding me back. I mean, yes, there's certain top tiers that seem to beat Honda clean, and you really have to look for a mistake that they're making in order to really win a match. But at the same time, my Honda's playing pretty darn solid against almost everyone and getting more wins than losses. So, yeah, I am excited for more Honda when we get a chance to play with them again. Overall now, 2,363 wins, 1,542 losses for a 61% win rate overall in Street Fighter VI with 3,905 total matches played. Pretty insane, huh? And uh, that means likely... Within the next two to three sessions of Street Fighter VI, 
I will hit 2,500 wins, which is essentially my next big win milestone, right? So that is coming. I'm excited for that. Uh, also, last night, we did like uh, my final community night. And what I mean by that is, as you know, over the last month to month and a half, once a week, I've been doing a night where I do a lobby in Street Fighter VI, and any viewers can join. We password protect the lobby, but as long as you're watching uh, the stream, you know the password, and you can join, you can play against me. And I've enjoyed this because I've played a variety of, of people, different characters. It's allowed me to try characters that are, aren't so serious. Like, for example, I really like Dalsim in this game. I think he's fun to play, he's tricky, he's mix-ups, cancels that are really neat. The problem is, basically, uh, he, he gets dominated by most people online. A lot of people kind of know easy strategies against him. Like, like freaking Drive Impact is ridiculous against him because most of his moves are one hit, and, and, you know, not a lot of them are cancelable. So he does his one hit, and then he gets stuffed by Drive Impact constantly. It's very annoying. Um, so, without having to, to try to grind my way through ranked and just get spanked around by, by people online, uh, I get to play him in, you know, these more casual matches against viewers. It's very fun. I get to have good matchups and, and have a good time. Um, plus, you know, other characters that I kind of used to play with and don't really play with anymore, like Marisa and stuff like that. So, uh, it was good. It was a good last hurrah. And you might say, well, why was this the last hurrah for Community Night? If you've enjoyed doing these matches, why don't keep doing them? Well, here's the thing. As you guys know, I really don't have a lot of opportunity to do online multiplayer outside of just random matches. You know, I'm not really a kind of guy that, that does sets with people. I don't have a team of players I play with online. And so... Most of the time, I don't really do this at all. It's been many, many years since I had a game where I played online with my viewers, okay? And so, Street Fighter VI was the exception. It was nice to have that come back. But, this Friday's Armor Core, the week after Starfield, I have to finish GTA V, we have to finish Chrono Trigger, all before we get too far into the busy fall gaming season. So, Street Fighter VI is now exclusively going to be night streams, which is only around two to two and a half hour sessions. And since I'm probably only going to be playing it once or twice a week, um, I need to focus on ranked. Like, I need to try to get my Blanca and my Honda back to Master. Well, my Honda, my Honda's not never been at Master, but it's well on the way. And my Blanca, I want to get back to Master like it, he was on Xbox, okay? So, that's my ultimate goal. Once that's completed, then I want to go and play other characters like Lily or Luke and try to, you know, rank them up as well. So, that's my my goal here and if I'm only playing Street Fighter 6 once or twice a week I have to focus on that if I'm doing community night now I'm doing even less progress in the game you know what I mean so I really feel like you know sadly if of all the things to be sacrificed right now in the rotation you got a bunch of playthroughs that need to be finished in a timely manner it's really the community night is a thing that that needs to be kind of sacrificed now I'm not saying that we'll never go back to a community night in Street Fighter 6. I really enjoyed doing them, but at this point, it's the thing that has to be on the chopping block so we have room for everything else. So, thank you to everyone who over the last month and a half has joined me for community night. I really had a lot of fun with it and a good the, the good variety and the good opponents and, you know, it's just been a great time. And, uh, you know, maybe we will bring it back once things calm down. Once the busy fall gaming season is starting to taper off, uh, maybe we'll bring back community nights into the, the rotation, but as of now, uh, you know, they've basically had their time in the sun, as they say, and now it's time to move on, all right? So, the final community night, here's how it went. It was a lot rougher than other community nights, and I would say it's for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, man, the first, like, four or five matches I played were atrociously bad connections. I think the best one I had was 100 milliseconds. But most of those connections ended up being like 160 plus milliseconds, which means you can't really react to anything. And I opted to not use any Honda, no Blanca, none of the characters I'm great with. Instead, I only used my characters that I, I'm not that good with. And so I lost a lot. Here's the, the statistics. Um, with Luke, I went even, 6-6. Six and six. With Lily, it was even, 5-5. Five and five. With Dalzim, it was a big, a big losing record, 4-9. and nine. With Zangief, it was a winning record, 11-5. and five. With Marisa, almost even, 5-4. and four. So overall, 31 wins, 29 losses. Pretty even, which is fine. You know, I don't really care about my performance on Community Night or whatever. Um, but definitely, when I'm playing people from all over the world, which is exactly what it is with Community Night, you know, those connections are like, ugh, 
And so, good luck reacting, right, to a lot of things going on in the game. Um, still had a great time with it, though. So, thanks again, and that's it. That's the final send-off for Street Fighter VI's Summer of Street Fighter. It was a great time. It's really because we've had fun summertime events. Like, three years ago, we had the Summer of Judgment, right? Last year, we inadvertently had a Summer of Retro 2.0, it wasn't intentional, but that's just what ended up happening. This year, absolutely this year, was the summer of Street Fighter, right? Every summer we have, like, a different theme. <clears throat> so. Yes, thank you all. And uh, now it is time to move on positively, so let's talk about that. Uh, so what's next on the agenda? Well, let's talk about the schedule for what's coming up in the next couple of weeks, okay? So. Today, it's my weekly react show, DSP versus the Internet, over on my React channel, DSP Reacts. That's the sister channel. You can find it at youtube.com forward slash at DSP Reacts. Okay? Uh, interesting show. Three plus hours, a variety of clips. Um, after having made the playlist for the show last night, this weird this week's going to be weird. This week, we've got really weird stuff. I'm serious. Like, there's weird animations. There's weird comedy. There's some weird... It's just weird. I, I really don't know if there's even going to be, like, a theme this week. As you'll see, there's a lot of random stuff. And the thing is, you never know what you're going to get. Outside of the Ultra members, who are the highest level supporters who were guaranteed to check out their clips, once you get to that randomized playlist of everyone who's a member there, like, you have absolutely no clue what you're going to watch. And basically, I, you know, I don't know what on earth is going to happen. So I guess we'll see. Um... I guess we'll... By the way, these idiots in chat trying to derail. Just get them out of here, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious, but hopefully it's a good show. You know, we've had a lot more members on DSP Reacts recently because uh, some people have been joining, but also there have been a lot of gifted memberships on the channel. So instead of having the usual suspects nominate videos, we've had a big variety of videos <clears throat> nominated. And that's led to a lot of uh, interesting results, to say the least. So we'll see what the show looks like today. Um, a day later than usual, but it should still be a good time. So after this this podcast ends, if you're here live on the stream, you'll see the pop-up. It'll say, hey, everyone's headed over to the channel. Check that out. Just click on there. It should bring you right over there. Um, and uh, then we can all relax and, and enjoy the, the react show, okay? Now, later tonight, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, it will be the continuation of Chrono Trigger here on DSP Gaming. I've absolutely loved this playthrough. It's been a grand old time, a great time. Last time around, we did a ton. We beat the Fiend Lord's Castle. We got warped back in time to 65 million BC. We took out the Reptites. We saw the evolution of how Lavos essentially started on Earth. <clears throat> and then we got warped to a magical land, and we're trying to get answers. We're trying to figure out what is going on in this magic land. It's like supposed to be like 12,000 BC or something like that. So we did a lot last stream. It was a very productive Chrono Trigger stream. Tonight, I, could I predict we continue on with that. Uh, exploring the magical towns and everything. And uh, I think, if I remember correctly, I think there's a dungeon coming up. <clears throat> and then you basically have to travel through time like a second time and do a bunch of like second string missions. And then, if I remember correctly, there's optional content that opens up that you can do before you head into the end game of the game. So we're making great progress. I've, I took a look at my original playthrough of Chrono Trigger from 10 years ago. And back then, I was only doing 10-minute parts. And by the time that we were at where we are in Chrono Trigger now, we were 43 parts in. And for reference, that playthrough was 90 parts, or 91 parts. So if you do the math, it's about halfway through. And we're about 10 hours, 11 hours into Chrono Trigger right now. So that makes about that makes sense, you know. So uh, excited for more. Uh, tonight, I hope you'll join me for more Chrono Trigger chill fun on the late stream, okay? Now, tomorrow, we finally get back to GTA V. My anniversary run will continue on the main stream. We're about just under two-thirds through the story of the game. And there's only a few major side missions left in the game to do. <clears throat> so I feel like within the next one to two streams, we're really going to hit the stride of the story and probably kind of make that push to advance the story and start heading into the end portion of GTA V. Um, so that should be good tomorrow. And then tomorrow night will be Street Fighter VI ranked gameplay with Blanca. What I'm going to try to do... I'm going to try to see if I can make it to that stream a little early. And I'm going to see if I can maybe stick around a little late. 
And the reason I say that is because this is my one chance this week to play ranked with Blanca. And I want to see if I can get him put, bumped up. Right now, I want to say he's two-star diamond. So I kind of want to see if I can do exactly what I did with Honda yesterday and maybe get Blanca to four-star diamond. But obviously, I need time to do that. So we're going to see if I can maybe get a little bit of extra gameplay in tomorrow night and try to get my Ronka up the rank. My Ronka. My Blanca up the ranks. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Then on Wednesday, my final consecutive streaming day of the week, because yes, this is a, slow, uh, a shorter streaming week. Uh, after last week's incredibly extended eight days, this is only a five-day streaming week. It'll be more GTA 5 on the first stream. And then the late stream on Wednesday night, listen to this, I've decided we're going to do more World Tour in Street Fighter Six. Why not? We'll already have done two ranked sessions for the week, so why not do a fun World Tour stream to advance that story mode of Street Fighter Six? Last time around last week, we had a lot of fun, remember? <laughs> I ran into the E-Honda. I got to wear E-Honda's butt floss diaper, which was fun. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Basically, I, I want to do more of that, so we're going to do that Wednesday night for some chill fun. So, there you go. And that's my streaming week. I'll be off on Thursday. Friday, the premiere of Armored Core 6, which is literally downloading right now to my Xbox. So, we'll play it as the daytime stream on Friday and see how it goes. Friday night will still be Friday Night Fights where I do Street Fighter. In this case, it'll be ranked Street Fighter, probably more Honda. And then uh, Saturday is the big anniversary event. I cannot wait for this coming Saturday. The closer it gets, the more excited I'm getting for my 15-year anniversary event. Are you guys excited? I know I am because here's the deal. Here's why I'm excited for Saturday. First of all, it's a marathon. But we're not pressured to do any kind of progress. This is not a marathon where it's like, oh, I have to play a game and do this. I have to, Oh, I have to do a sim match or whatever. It's a more relaxed style marathon, okay? We don't actually have to do any amount of content. Instead, it's a day where we can just relax together and have a good time. And that's really my attitude this coming Saturday. Let's relax together and let's celebrate my 15-year legacy as a YouTuber, okay? The ups, the downs, the all-arounds, right? Because, man, I've been on, on highs and lows over these years. And uh, it'll be a good time to just relax and reminisce about it, okay? What is on the agenda for Saturday? Well, first of all, in the opening segment after the podcast, what I would like to do is talk about my history as a YouTuber. Talk about how my life, what my life was like, you know, 15 years ago. And why I decided to originally start making YouTube content to begin with. You know, the origins of me making YouTube videos and the initial reaction to my YouTube videos and how they were received and how I decided to dedicate more time to it. And then essentially what happened in my personal life that was unintended and allowed me to take a big risk trying to be an online content creator. You know, those first few years were very tumultuous for sure um, and unsure and uncertain if I was ever going to be able to do this for a living. Um, and then about the evolution of what happened over the course of time as me being a YouTuber because man has content changed on the internet from the early days when I was catering more to like a teen audience and I was doing this kind of immature, uh, over the top kind of shocking joke humor and turning that instead into a more meaningful online presence with interactivity, with longer, more detailed, more care and attention filled playthroughs. Um, interactivity on my streams and having it be more about a social aspect of us hanging out rather than it necessarily being about the quality of the gameplay that I'm putting out because really I don't think that that was ever going to work if I kept focusing on that um, and just in general the ups and downs and things that I've been through over the years so the first whole segment of this show will be a trip down memory lane me recapping my history as a YouTuber and you know likely it's going to be like an hour or more of me just kind of talking about what's what's transpired in the last 15 years okay and that's going to be fun and then what we're going to do is we are going to look at the moments that you guys have nominated as your favorite moments of the last 15 years. You have been nominating your favorite moments uh, of my presence on YouTube for about a month now almost. I started it right at the beginning of, uh, of August. And so uh, definitely what will happen is it's going to be very fun to be going down that, you know, that memory lane and seeing what you guys thought was the best. And so there's been members who've been nominating. There's 
standard viewers who've been nominating. If you haven't nominated yet, you basically have a few more days to do so because Saturday is the event. So if you want to nominate some of your favorite moments from my history as a content creator, whether it's gameplay, a game review, a vlog, a countdown, a comedy skit, uh, you know, anything from over the years, you know, DSP tries it, right? Taste testing or, you know, maybe a podcast. Who knows? There's been so much content I put out. I mean, there's crazy amounts, right, to review. So number one, if you're a standard viewer of mine, if you type exclamation point retrospective into the chat right now, a link will pop up. <clears throat> you can click on that link and you can use that link to nominate. Or uh, just go to the main channel page of this channel, DSP Gaming. Go to the community tab and scroll down to the beginning of the month and you'll actually find the thread posted there publicly where you can post up. Now, if you're a member of this channel, you're in luck. You get priority to nominate what you want to see this coming Saturday. <clears throat> and the members have had their own thread how do you access it? Well, again, go to the main channel page of DSP Gaming, go to the Members tab, and you should see the thread right there that members have been posting up in all month long. I'm limiting nominations right now to two per person. But what I'll probably do is tomorrow night, all right, I'll sit down and I'll take a look and I'll see how many actual nominations we have. And if we have more than enough for the marathon, then we're good. But if I'm looking like we don't have a lot or we don't have enough, what I might do is allow people to go and post as many as they want. <clears throat> I didn't initially want to do that because I didn't want to have the same five people post up the majority of nominations and then have the entire event be the same people. You know what I mean? But hey, I'm trying to give people as much opportunity as possible. Let's see what happens. And, it, you know, again, if by, like, say, Wednesday-ish, it looks like there's not enough, I'll probably open up the nominations. But what we'll be doing after my initial segment of me talking about my history as a YouTuber is watching back those moments together, reacting to them, laughing along, and, you know, I'm sure I'm going to be adding context. I'm going to be adding reference to how things used to be versus how they are today. <clears throat> and a lot of stuff like that, okay? So, there you have it. That is, uh, that is a big event. Now, what else is going on on Saturday? Well, yes, I'll be drinking. I know every once in a while I have a more laid-back podcast or laid-back uh, react marathon. In this case... I'll have some booze. What booze? I don't know. On my day off this week, I'm going to go to the liquor store and grab something. So I'm not sure what it'll be at. But I'll get something. And if we hit certain, you know, contribution levels or whatever, I'll probably take a shot and, you know, kind of loosen up a little bit, more relaxed atmosphere. In addition, my wife will be making some food for the day. What will she be making? I'm not sure yet. One of the ideas we tossed around is that she can make some foods that are themed to video games that I've played. Right? Like, if you take a look... There's been a lot of video game themed recipes and cookbooks and things over the years. So maybe she could do like two or three different dishes and we could try them over the course of the day if they're video game themed. Kind of go through my history of gaming with, with these recipes or whatever. I thought that could be kind of neat. Um, but I honestly don't know. Uh, it, it's really depending on what she finds. And she's looking. As of today, she started looking. She's going to look for the next couple of days and then hone in on recipes she likes. And then we're going to be shopping for the ingredients later this week on my day off. And so we'll have some food that we'll be taste testing during the course of this marathon event on Saturday. So you'll have a segment of my history, me talking about my history as a YouTuber. We'll have a lot of reacting to content, live reacting. We'll have some drinking, some relaxation, some interaction, and some food. It's going to be a party-like, laid-back atmosphere this coming Saturday. And whether you're a new fan of mine, whether you're a longtime fan, I feel like this event will be a good time for everyone who attends. There's only once you can celebrate your 15-year anniversary of anything, right? So, <clears throat> if you guys could come by and just chill with me, whether it's five minutes or five hours, if you could come by on Saturday and just say, hey, what's going on? I'd really appreciate that. To see, you know, people, maybe we'll see people come by who we haven't seen in ages, right? That'd be really nice. If you're someone who only watches the podcast and you really don't usually swing by, come swing by on Saturday just to say hello. It'd be nice just to see a few friendly faces who maybe we haven't seen in a long time, Okay. Yes, Derek, that is, a, that is an important reminder. He says, if you are going to be nominating moments for Saturday's Marathon, remember timestamps because a lot of these th videos that people nominate are very long. And if you just say, oh, here's a video, and it's 20 minutes long, I'm not going to sit there and watch 20 minutes of a video. I got, you know, what's the funny part we're looking for? So if you timestamp it, it'll help me figure that out, okay? <clears throat> okay. So there you go. All right, so... That's the deal for Saturday. I'm very excited for Saturday. I hope that you guys are too. Um, and uh, it should be a good day. All day long, celebrating my history as a content creator, 15-year anniversary. It's a great way to do, end the summer, I feel. Uh, then this Saturday will be the next React show, DSP versus the Internet. I'll probably pair that with 
Chrono Trigger on the late stream. And then for the rest of that week, which will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the daytime streams will be a balance between GTA 5 and Armored Core. And the night streams will be a balance between Street Fighter 6 and Chrono Trigger. Okay? Now, the big question on everyone's mind, the burning question, when will Phil start playing Starfield? Because there is an opportunity here, all right, to play it on two different dates. Now, first of all, I am a Game Pass subscriber. And that means that I get access to Starfield on September 6th. All right, that's the official release date of the game. Okay, so <clears throat> that is exciting, obviously. I'm very excited for Starfield. I'm hoping it's good, and if not, it's still going to be fascinating to cover it. It's kind of the big game everyone is hinging everything on, both for Microsoft and Bethesda. So it'll be fascinating to cover this game for you guys, okay? So the latest I'll be covering it is on the 6th. But there is an opportunity to cover it early. If I spend some money, I think it's around like $35 or something like that, you can upgrade the Game Pass version to be the more the del del deluxe version, and that means you get to play it five days early. So that would mean I would get to play it a week from this Friday, which would be September 1st. Now here's the thing. Let's say... Between this week and next week, I make great progress in GTA 5, and it looks like we're either beating it or we're at the end of it, okay? Or, let's say we played Armored Core 6, and I play it one or two streams, and it's kind of like, eh, it's all right, but I'm not in love with it, and I'm not really dying to play much more of it, and I'm definitely not committing to a big full playthrough of it, right? Then I would say, hey, if we've got the opportunity, and we've got the time, and it's not going to hinder the other things I'm doing... I would pay the extra 30 some dollars and we'll play Starfield early. We'll cover it on the 1st and I'll probably cover it for a couple days as the daytime stream um, <clears throat> to get a little bit of that initial gameplay in a little earlier, right? The thing, the thing that people are telling me is that remember when I did this with Hogwarts Legacy earlier this year and do I remember the big success I had with that? Do you want to know my honest answer? No, I don't even remember. I guess what people are saying is when Hogwarts Legacy came out, you could pay for the earlier edition, and I did that, and apparently I got, like, big results. Like, I had a big premiere day where everyone showed up, and there was tons of support, and everyone was having a great time, and the viewership was great. I honestly don't even remember. I'm just being honest, you know. These playthroughs end up being so lengthy, I don't even remember that that launch day at all, okay? So the thing is, I'd be okay with doing that, but I don't want it to hinder the other things we're doing. Like, I don't want to start Starfield, and now GTA 5 is delayed for two weeks and doesn't have, doesn't finish. You know what I'm saying? So, let's see what happens this week and next week. I got basically four streams guaranteed of GTA 5. That's 12 hours of gameplay. In the 12 hours of gameplay, will we get to the end of the game and then it's fine? Doesn't It's not a big deal, you know? Or, like I said, on the flip side of that, what if... I play Armored Core and we play a stream or two and I'm not really liking it and you guys aren't really liking it. It's just not the kind of game, right, that we're into. And if that's the case, then I don't know why I had that up the whole time. Uh, if that's the case, then we definitely don't have to uh, worry about playing it more and I can do Starfield early. So there's a lot of factors involved. It's a kind of a what if right now. I guess we'll know more by next week as we're leading into the hype for Starfield, okay? But it's a definite maybe for me. It's a maybe... For getting it early and playing it on the first. Um, so let's see what happens. Okay. So. Uh, there. And then. I've, I believe the next big game coming out. Would be Lies of P. Which I want to say is around the middle of September. And that's a Game Pass game. So at the very least I'm going to try it. Again I'm not committing to a playthrough of it. I've actually heard mixed things about it. Some people played the demo and really liked it. And some people played the demo and thought it sucked. So I don't know. Like I guess we'll base it on. When it comes out, I'll play a session on Game Pass, see if I like it or not, and decide if we want to keep it as a playthrough in the rotation or not. Um, Mortal Kombat 1 also comes out in the middle of September. That I will be covering fully, both playing through the entirety of the story mode, any other single-player content. It used to be the crypt mode, but they said there's no crypt mode this time. So whatever the, the new content is, they're adding for single-player. And, of course, trying out different characters, going online, playing with the game, etc. in that capacity as well. So, yes, Mortal Kombat 1 will be covered. And then later on in September, there's more new releases. But, I mean, we don't need to get that far ahead of ourselves. Now, will there be a big special event in September? I honestly don't know. Um, the way I see it, since there's so many new games out, 
do we really need to have a special event in September? Maybe not. You know, we've had a special event literally every month. We had the anniversary event this coming weekend. The one before we had the Digital Summer Party. Before that, we had, well, we had the big Machinima React event, remember? We also had the big Fight and Feast before the release of Street Fighter VI. Like, every month we've been having a big marathon. Do we really need one in September if there's so many games coming out and I'm juggling them all? Maybe not, right? I will say this. We are absolutely going to have a Halloween marathon event like we always do in October. We will obviously have a big Christmas event in December like we always do. And likely we'll try to do something, you know, around Thanksgiving as well, around the end of November. So I don't know. Maybe we should just do like a one month off split and not do a marathon. It's really up to you. You guys, give me your thoughts. What would you like to see if I were to do a marathon-style event in September? Like, I could, I could think of things for now to the end of the year. For example, the October would be Halloween. November would be the the, mar the ad marathon. Do you remember last year we did the we did the adpocalypse? We could do adpocalypse again. It was really good last year. It was fun to react to all those ads, and we could do an adpocalypse V two. It could be Return of the Adpocalypse, right in November. And then December, we can do the Christmas event. So <clears throat> that's what I'm thinking. But as for September, we're kind of open. Let me know what you think. Give me your thoughts, your ideas, and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay? All right. I think I've covered everything now. Now, what I will say is this before we head on to the next segment, Game News. Um, please support my streams today if you can. As you know, I'm a crowdfunded individual. I don't have any... any sponsorships i don't have any product placements i don't shill anything i don't get paid to play a game this is all original content that i make that is honest and it is you who allow me to continue to make a living doing what i love you guys out there are the real reason why i continue to make a living making content on the internet okay so please consider contributing in some way to today's stream whether it be a like whether it be a super chat a super sticker a membership, a gifted membership for the community, or a tip. All is appreciated. And remember that I will be doing uh, crossover goals. And what I mean by that is any tips that I receive on today's stream here in the morning actually carry over to the stream over on DSP Reacts. So if we get like 20, 30 bucks on this stream, that carries over to the goal for the React show. It's not like it resets or anything like that. We'll keep that rolling, okay? So, yeah, you know, all those goals... Uh, are great and thank you to anyone who supports in any way we will get to shout outs in a moment because we have a, a couple things to shout out here um hold on one second here okay so all right um let us now move on to game news we have a few stories to cover today on dspn i feel like we need some kind of music to play there right like if i click over there it goes like dun, 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 you know like some music theme <laughs> i need something if you have anyone out there uh has ideas or anyone can make a little bit of a little, little music ditty or intro maybe it sounds like a news desk someone's typing or something i don't know I feel like we should have something for the news segment, okay? Anyway, <clears throat> here's our gaming news segment for the day, all right? First of all, in the upcoming Metal Gear Solid collection that's going to be coming out in the fall, Konami has confirmed that the Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 HD editions that are going to be in that Master Collection Volume 1 are indeed the exact Blue Point versions. Meaning, if you already owned the Metal Gear collection from, like, over 10 years ago, the one that I originally played for YouTube, this is the same deal. The only thing they did was very, very finely tweaking things that maybe didn't convert over perfectly to modern consoles. So, you know, that was a PS3 game. Maybe having the PS3 game run on PS5, there were some issues. They just tried to clear up those issues. But outside of that, the graphics, the music, the voice acting, the controls... The actual game itself is identical. So all you're doing is rebuying the collection from over 10 years ago. I mean, for me, like I told you guys, the only real use of that collection for me would be that you could play Metal Gear Solid 1 on a modern console. Up until now, the only way you could have done that would have been to play it originally on PS1 or to play the PS1 version emulated 
on PlayStation Network by playing it on a PS3 digitally, or by somehow owning the GameCube version, which was incredibly rare and incredibly expensive. So if you didn't have any of those options, <clears throat> you couldn't play Metal Gear Solid 1. So now, uh, they're basically saying, you know, this is how you do it. This is how you, how you can play it. Great, but I don't foresee it being of value. I think what will happen is a ton of people who are fanboys of Metal Gear will rebuy the collection, but it's the same exact versions you've already played. So for me, there's no excitement there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not excited for that. It's not interesting to me in any way. So maybe eventually I'll get it to play Metal Gear Solid 1 again, but man, I'm not rushing to buy the same games I've already played, right? There, I changed the color for DSP News. When we go to News, I'll change the colors, and then I'll change them back when we go back to the other screen. How about that? Okay, so... It's a little late for a color transition. Um, so no big deal there, but it basically confirms everything we already knew. That it's really not a real new collection. It's just porting something you already had. Okay? Um, <clears throat> this announcement came out this morning, and a lot of people got completely terrified. Nintendo has announced that Charles Martinet, the man who has voiced Mario in all of the Mario Brothers games since the early 1990s, ever since Mario got a spoken voice, is retiring and will no longer do any voice acting whatsoever for Nintendo games, but they're supposedly keeping him on as an employee under a Nintendo ambassador capacity. Now, what does that ha mean? First of all, people were freaking out. They were like, is he dead? No, he's not dead. Why people immediately jump to like the most ridiculous worst thing? No, Charles Martinet is not dead. It's just, this is a different kind of announcement. So let's not freak out about it, okay? He's still alive. All right, let's not jump the gun. But I think the writing was on the wall when two, three years ago, when Nintendo was developing the Super Mario Brothers movie, and it was announced out of nowhere that Chris Pratt was going to be the voice of Mario. And everyone was like, wait, what? It's always been Charles Martinet. He's always been the voice of Mario for almost, well, over 30 years now, right? And why would they go in a different direction? Why would they go for a celebrity voice actor? And people were very much up in arms for a long time. And even other voice actors were coming out. And saying, this is messed up. Why are you doing this to Mr. Martinet? He's always been the voice. Why would you take this job away from him where he could have made a lot of money? It could have helped him in his livelihood. And why would Nintendo do this? Right? And Nintendo essentially just never said a word about it. They just kept their, their, their lips zipped. Never explained why they didn't go with Charles Martinet. And by the way, apparently, after the backlash, Nintendo did hire Charles Martinet to do additional voices for the movie and did actually pay him for some work for the movie even though originally they had never intended that was going to be the case. Okay? So, I already feel like this was already in the works. They already were on the way of saying that they didn't want Mr. Martinet to be the voice of Mario anymore. They were going in different directions. But the, the thing was that he's been such a beloved person in the Nintendo community. People know this man. He's toured. He goes to conventions to represent Mario and Nintendo. And, you know, a lot of people say it's not just about the actor. It's about everything they do outside of the direct acting. That's also part of the process. I mean, recently, um, that Ninja Turtles movie came out, what, two, three weeks ago? And basically, the reports are, oh, it actually didn't do as well as they thought it would have, even though it had great word of mouth. And the reason they feel that's the case is because there's a strike right now in Hollywood, both the actors and a writer's strike. So the actors who voice acted the movie were not allowed to promote the movie. So you had big, prominent voice actors like Seth Rogen and stuff who weren't allowed to go out there and promote the Ninja Turtle movie, and they feel like it didn't do as well as it should have because the strike was going on. So case in point with Charles Martinet, this guy has been going around promoting Nintendo and Mario nonstop for 30 years, right? So he's super beloved by the community. So, if you want my honest take on this situation, here's what I think happened. I think Nintendo originally liked having him as the voice actor for, for Mario, okay? They really liked him. But what happened is over the years, 
they probably did want to change up Mario. They probably wanted to go in a different direction, and now that they're actually looking to turn Mario into something other than just a video game property, but other things, they probably wanted to, to expand out. But they've got Charles Martinet as the voice of Mario, and he's, like, synonymous, and everyone knows him, and everyone, you know, they love that voice, they love the guy. So they're like, how on earth... Are we going to get rid of him? <laughs> so what they did is the slowest transition possible so as not to upset people, right? Keep having them do a game here or there, but then do a movie and then sneak in that it's not him doing the voice acting, but then have him do some other voices for the movie, and then finally just announce, okay, we're not firing the guy. He'll still be a, an ambassador for Nintendo, but he's not going to do the voices anymore. So essentially, here's what that tells me. He's going to go to conventions... He's still going to be the voice of Mario as he represents them publicly, but he's not going to do the voice ever again in any official capacity, right? So that's what it sounds like to me. Um, so it's not a horrible thing, but yeah, for anyone who is, loves that voice of Mario, I guess it's now time to accept that that's the end of it. You know, probably whatever the next Mario game, we're, we're going to have someone different doing the voice of Mario, and how are we going to accept that? We've had the same Mario for 30 years. It's a me, Mario. Let's go. And now it's going to be something completely different. So, all things, all good things must come to an end. We had the end of the summer of Street Fighter. We have the end of Charles Martinet as the voice of Mario. What's next? I don't know. But anyway, a lot of people are talking about this story this morning. And now the third and final story for the day, which is, uh, undoubtedly is the stupidest story possible. Okay, it really is the dumbest thing possible. You ready for this? There is so much uh, discourse, hype, and a lot hinging on Starfield. We all know this, right? That Bethesda hasn't put out a good game in a while. We know that. Um, Microsoft, since they bought all those studios five years ago, not a single good game has been pumped out. I mean, you could argue Halo Infinite, which then fizzled out within a year and no one talks about or plays anymore. So, everyone is awaiting Starfield to see if it's good or bad. And some people are on one side of the fence and some people are on the other side. And some people like me are kind of in between where I'm just in a wait and see attitude. And if it's great, I'm excited. And if it's not, oh well, at least I'll still cover it, you know, fairly. Um, so, yeah. So, this is, is kind of interesting, this situation. But what's happened is now people are starting to micro-analyze every single piece of Starfield. And it's, it's stupid. I'm sorry, it's just really fucking dumb. Okay? For example, Starfield preloads are now available. You can preload Starfield on a console. I literally just did it. It's now on my Xbox Series X. And you're able to boot it up, and you can see the title screen. And the title screen, I think, is just like a planet that's very barren, or very bare, doesn't look too interesting. It's just like the silhouette of a planet or whatever. People have started coming out and criticizing the title screen of Starfield. Okay? The title screen of Starfield. It's the fucking title screen. It's not the game. And people are coming, oh, well, it was, I think it was actually, it was in Grums or something. I think he's a game developer who works for Activision Blizzard. He comes out and he makes the most lame-brained, idiotic, stupid post I've ever seen in my life. You ready for this? Oh, well, you see, that title screen of Starfield really shows the level of effort that the studio put into the game. You can tell that it's a rushed effort because the title screen is literally just a still image of a planet. Nothing there to see, and that's probably going to be case in point for the rest of the game or something like that. And you read it and you're like, this guy has got to be the biggest fucking jackass on Earth. Like, really? The title screen of the game is supposed to be representative of the quality of the entire game. Have you seen any title screens of video games ever? Like, back in the day, title screens actually did have effort put into them. Remember Super Mario Bros. 3? How much effort was put into that one? You have Mario and Luigi running around jumping on creatures, and there's big there's curtains coming down in the background. It looks really sweet. It's, like, it's cool. It gets you hyped for the game, right? But usually, modern days, title screens aren't that good. It's usually just the name of the game as a splash and just like a still image and some music playing and that's it. Nothing else going on, right? And it's hilarious because people started saying, oh yeah, remember all those games that really sucked like Skyrim? Remember that terrible title screen? You want to know what the Skyrim title screen is? Just the dragon symbol. That's it. It doesn't even fucking say Skyrim. It's just the dragon symbol. So it's like, 
what are you talking about, you tremendous douchebag? It just sounds to me like they basically want to be assholes about it and criticize every little piece of this game in a very negative way just to say, you know, oh, it's not worth the hype or whatever. Like, what on earth are you talking about? So what's funny is one of the main game developers of Starfield came out and did a post. He's, and here it is, Pete Hines. Word for word, I'll read it for you. Or they designed what they wanted. That's been our menu for years. It was one of the first things we settled on. Having an opinion is one thing. Questioning how a developer's care because you would have done it differently is highly unprofessional coming from another game dev. Yeah. Grums is an asshole. He really is. He's a fucking piece of shit for saying something dumb like that. The, the fucking title screen is not representative of the whole game, you complete moron. It's like he's never touched a video game for the last 20 years. <laughs> what an asshole. So anyway, um, that's what I mean. Like, this whole Starfield situation is becoming so ridiculous. Absolutely so much hype and then so much hate and so much going on around Starfield that, you know, it's hard to really, it's hard to gauge what's going to happen with this game. I feel like no matter what, people are not going to say it lives up to expectations. Seriously, because... When a game has this much writing on it, and you got people criticizing the goddamn title screen like it matters, you know what I'm saying? It seems to me like no matter what, this game will not be good enough, you know? At the same time, as you know, I've been critical of what we've seen of Starfield so far. I'm not sold that this game will be more than a glorified No Man's Sky combined with the shooting mechanics of, say, Fallout or, or Borderlands. It doesn't look unique to me. It just doesn't, all right? And the fact that they're locking this at 30 frames per second on consoles is very alarming. Why would they do that, right? I, I'm very apprehensive about the quality of this game at this point, you know? Um, but I guess we're going to find out sooner rather than later. We've got about a week and a half to wait. By the way, the review embargo is the 31st of August, the day before the early release date of September 1st. So we will have reviews out for this game you know in 10 days however there's already leaks of the game on the internet what a shocking situation i never would have expected that bethesda would give out early release game codes and the game would be leaked all over the internet what a fucking twist that i never foresaw happening how many fucking times have i said over the years you don't need to put out early release codes they serve no fucking purpose whatsoever they don't create hype they don't properly advertise a game. They don't. These game developers don't understand. It's not the 1990s. You don't need to have media reviewing the game two weeks early for a print magazine that needs to go out before the game is out to promote it. This is bullshit. Just fucking release your game on release day and let the players actually fucking play it and review it for themselves. If they're apprehensive if the game's good or not, have them wait a day or two before they buy it and watch someone else play it. Don't fucking put out pre-release codes. You're shooting yourself in the foot and your whole games are leaking early. How the fuck do you not realize this yet? It happens for every game. It happened for Zelda recently. And Nintendo really does the most they can to try to keep all their IPs under lock and key and Zelda fucking leak. <clears throat> so what in the hell made you think Starfield wasn't going to leak, right? This is just nonsense. We have to stop with this ridiculously stupid practice at this point. All right? But anyway, I digress. Let's see what happens in the next couple of weeks, and I'm curious if I'll be playing it on the first or not. We'll find out. All right. That's DSP News. And now we transition back. <laughs> to the standard show. Ready? Uh, here we go. All right, we're back. There we go. So... That's what I got for the podcast today. All right? Now, I'm going to do shout-outs. But this is going to be fast because I have one shout-out to do. It's from 2B is Cute, who did a $2 super chat and says, I got Street Fighter VI. I'm going to use this time to get good. Well, enjoy. Even if you're a more casualized player, I think you'll still enjoy Street Fighter VI, especially with the modern controls, which a lot of pro players have actually been adopting and using and doing really well with. So, enjoy. Outside of that, I literally have no shout-outs, guys. No, there's been no contributions today. So, 
If you were thinking of contributing, now would be the time. I'll give you a shout out, put you on the leaderboard. If not, I guess we're just going to open up the show to a little bit of Q&A. Remember, contributions carry over to the React show. So if you contribute in some way, you'll stay on the leaderboard for the next stream. Okay? Okay. What's up, Juan? Good morning. Europe Gaming has re-upped their membership for 23 months. Has love and support. Almost two years of support. Hi. Thank you, Europe Gaming, for almost two years of support. I really appreciate that. Kagome, I'll see you on DSP React. Sounds good. All right. What do you guys want to chat about today? What's what's the hot new topic? What's the word on the streets today? I want to know. What's going on? Because I don't know. I tried to cover the news. I hope you guys enjoyed the news segment. Drop Armored Core for Crisis Core, says Lady. I don't think we're doing that, but there you go. Do I think I might be overreacting a bit? Yes, I constantly overreact to everything. When I take a shit... I scream at the top of my lungs and act like I'm launching torpedoes into the Pacific. So, Daxma says, do you know how many total hours of Street Fighter 6 you have? No. Um, I was looking at the PS5 version on the title screen. It says 28 hours. But I have absolutely no clue Xbox version. I don't even know where I would find that information. I'm sure it's tracked somewhere, but I don't know where. <clears throat> Ventisky says, what's the deal with Pac-Man? I know you're wearing a Pac-Man shirt. You have a ghost lamp. It, Pac-Man's a classic game that I played back in the day in arcades. I also had it on my Atari. And uh, it's I love it. It's a great game. Actually, a year or two ago, I played a Pac-Man collection during the summer. That was really neat. I really enjoyed that collection. Nasty Garage Ants, you are the old meme. Those ants are gone. After having dealt with those garage ants on my day off, I can confirm for the last two days there have been no garage ants. They are all taken care of. They're not in the house anymore. I deterred them from coming back, and that's a good thing. <clears throat> Tito Man says, Hope you had a great weekend. I've started playing Until Dawn, one of my favorite playthroughs. Yes, it was one of my one of the best playthroughs I did from back in the day, I feel. Very entertaining. It's like having an interactive B-movie, horror movie. It was really fun. Europe Gaming says, I've been watching your old weekend previews and release day unboxings. Amazing memories. I hope some people have nominated those for the retrospective this coming uh, Saturday because, yeah, those are legacy things I used to do for years and years and years. But, man, a sign of the times when... Essentially, release day unboxing didn't need to happen anymore because there was nothing in the box, right? And we can preview didn't make sense anymore because I was literally talking about my schedule, uh, you know, daily on a pre-stream and putting up schedules every day on my socials and everything. So there you go. Gatsu asked, will I play the Knights of the Old Republic remix? Uh, probably yes. I played Knights of the Old Republic in 2020. I really liked it, even though it was outdated. I liked seeing the origins of where the Bioware games went in the future. You could see a lot of those core gameplay elements that got, you know, refined and changed and improved for the future. And I really liked playing it, so I will probably play the remakes, yes. Is Jasper Italian? No, he is not. Genetic says, what was your first gaming console? Mine was the Game Boy Pocket. My original gaming console was Pong. Just Pong. Because back in the 70s and early 80s, they had these standalone units that had two paddles, or not even paddle, two like rotating knobs. And you would just plug this into your TV, turn it to like channel two or three, and you had Pong. And that was it. It was just fucking Pong, black and white. And I remember playing it and realizing if I messed with my TV's like tint and hue settings, I could make it different colors. So I could have like pastel Pong or like neon Pong, different colors on the TV, which was kind of neat. Um, the first real console that I had was the Atari 7800. And uh, both of those were given to me by my uncle. And he had given me a variety of games that were both the 2800 or 2600 and 7800 because it was cross-compatible, much like how the current Xbox console can play the last two gens of Xbox games. The Atari was the same back then. So I was playing you know, older, out, more outdated games. I was playing more updated, newer versions of the games. It was pretty neat, actually. <clears throat> What's my opinion on the PS Vita? It was a nice device that had great graphics, but was never really properly utilized for anything important. You know, I had a Vita. I bought it over a decade ago because it came out and people wanted to see me cover all the new peripherals back then. So I bought it, and I bought like three games. I bought like a Dungeon Siege, <clears throat> the uh, Uncharted Golden Abyss, and I had one more I can't even remember. Was it Resistance? Was it like a Resistance handheld game, I think it was, or something like that? So I played through all three of them, and I reviewed them. And then it sat around 
for a decade not being used. The last time it got used, Cat played uh, Persona 4 Golden on it. Downloaded it on there and played it on there. And since then, it's just been dead. It's worthless. So it really never was utilized at all. It, it had great graphics and everything, but it never really had a... Uh, it never really had anything that was like a must play, honestly, you know? It sucked. The graphics on there were great. They were like PS3 level graphics. They were so good. So I don't know why they didn't do more with it or try to make it a more essential part of the gaming ecosystem when it came to like Sony. They never really did anything on it that you had to play on it, so. Oh, there's not much you could do about that, Nobert. Nobert says, how do you get Jasper to not puke hairballs? I rescued a stray in my neighborhood, but he pukes huge hair logs. Chewables aren't working. Uh, yeah, the only thing you can do is try to change the diet. Because some cats, if you give them a different diet, it'll stop that. But there's really not much you can do about it. You know, it depends on the cat. Uh, with Jasper, he gets hairballs every once in a while, but it's not often. Like, just the other night, he barfed one up on the carpet of the freaking bedroom. I had to clean it up. But he doesn't do it all the time. I say maybe once every few weeks, maybe there's one. So it's not a big deal. But every cat's different. If you have a cat that has more hair, it's going to have a bigger problem. You see? Shout out to Europe Gaming, who just gifted a membership to the channel. And that membership just went to Genetics. Congratulations, Genetics, on getting a gifted membership. Be sure to thank Europe Gaming, and thank you, Europe Gaming, for that. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> Only the second contribution of the stream, so thank you so much. Tito Man says, my first console was the NES. Surprise for my parents in 97. I was six. I got it at a yard sale for 50 bucks. Wow, you got it way late. No, I've never juggled before. All right, Derek, I'll see you later for the reaction when you get home. Sounds good. Uh, I just, uh, Sith Alchemist, I literally just talked about this the other day, that on my day off, a cat had showed up in my backyard, and it looked like a Siamese, but it was a long hair, but it had no collar. And that's really weird, because why would a long hair, obviously domesticated cat, have no collar? It sounds to me like a cat that sadly had an owner, and the owner was irresponsible and just let the cat loose which sucks, obviously, because the cat shouldn't have to be out there fending for itself as a domesticated cat, but what are you going to do? But yeah, we see cats every once in a while. There's like two or three cats we see out there that are kind of running around, but it's not all the time. <clears throat> Did I upgrade to Windows 10 yet? I am currently running three different versions of Windows. On my PC that captures and streams only, that's all it does, okay? That is running Windows 8. On my laptop in front of me, which I use to monitor the streams and to do the chat, shout outs, and all of that, that's running on Windows 10. And then my new mini PC, which I'm currently doing my Chrono Trigger playthrough on, is running on Windows 11. So I have three different versions of Windows in my office right now. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Golden Noble's Atomic Heart felt very wonky, imprecise, and sadly, after just a few hours of playing it, not very fun, and that's why I never played it again. What's my favorite console of all time? Super Nintendo. And probably, unless something really amazing comes out, before now and when I die, I don't think anything's going to trump Super Nintendo. At the time, it was just, hands down, the best gaming experience. It had the best games, the best 16-bit graphics, outstanding music, great controller like everything about the super nintendo was tip top at the time even with the steep competition because it had competition from sega and some other you know console makers were trying to jump in there and come up with like 32 and 64 bit systems but the super nintendo was tippity top for its time lunili says the first pc you used on this channel was vista your 2011 pc was windows 7 you've used tons of different versions of windows there you go See you later, Europe Gaming. Thanks for the support this morning, man. <clears throat> no, Jasper doesn't have cat friends he plays with. He's an indoor cat. He can't go outside. <laughs> he doesn't go outside at all. Yes, I graduated from high school. Yes, I did. I can confirm that. Juan says, what's your favorite song child in Colombia? I have no idea what that means, Juan. I'm sorry. I have no idea what you just said. Well, I play the Pokemon DLC for Scarlet. Unlikely. Since it seems like it's going to be coming out during the busy fall gaming season, probably the worst time possible for it to come out. If it had come out 
earlier in the year when it was more downtime for games, maybe I would have considered it. But I'm going to be inundated with quite a lot of new games over the last two to three, the next two to three months. I, I don't see myself taking time out to play Pokemon again. <clears throat> I don't have a favorite Pokemon. Sorry. The one Pokemon I seem to, play, to get in every game is Gyarados. Although, I don't think I caught Gyarados in Arceus Legends because it was flying around and you couldn't really... It was hard to catch. So I never bothered. But usually I get it. Usually I get a, a Magikarp and I evolve the Magikarp. So. What's going on, Cracker Jacks? How are you today? Welcome. Do I like to bathe, watch videos, and eat in the bathtub? Yes, if I had my way, I would never leave the bathtub. I would just sit in the bathtub all day long. I would even defecate in the bathtub. That's fine. Because you're washing at the same time. Okay, that's disgusting. <laughs> no. The only time ever in my entire life that I really, like, had, like, a that kind of an experience, not defecating in the bathtub, but doing other things, was way back when, before I was a YouTuber, all right? I went to MAGFest before I was a YouTuber. So this wasn't me as a guest or whatever. No one knew who I was. And I actually rented out their higher-end hotel room in the hotel. This was not the hotel room that the convention goers were getting. This was the high-end suite. And it had one of those spa tubs with the jets and everything. So I sat there in the spa tub with the jets going, warm water, like a, like a big relaxing deal. And I had my laptop with me. Now, keep in mind, this was like, I want to say like 2007, right? 2007, 2008, before I was a YouTuber. So there was no, like, you couldn't even get digital TV or anything back then. There was, like, no Netflix or whatever. So I had my laptop, and it had a, a, a DVD player. So I was watching, like, DVDs on the laptop. um, Sitting on the edge of the hot tub. And I had dr a drink. I don't remember what I was drinking. It was probably rum and coke, because back then that's all I drank it was rum and coke. So I was probably having like a rum and coke in a hot tub, watching like like movies, relaxing every night after having been at the convention all day long. And that was like one of the most relaxing weekends I ever had in my life. I hung out with, with cool people at the convention and had a nice, you know, super spa like experience in the hotel room. Uh, after the convention evenings ended drinking and watching movies and relaxing and soaking so <laughs> that's probably the only time I've ever done that in my life what's going on shake my hand how are you well I play the Silent Hill 2 remake next year likely yes I think people would want to see that Soggy Gambino says did you adopt the Indian latrine style yet actually that's actually how I was always uh, watched I always you know shat into a, a you know like a squ squatty potty and then I wiped my ass with my hand. I just cupped the, the shit out of my ass. Of course. Everyone knows that. Do I have a secret tattoo? Yes, it's actually Charles Martinet. You've now exposed me. I have a, a tattoo of Charles Martinet on me somewhere. I'm not going to tell you where. All right? <laughs> I got it in honor of his retirement as the voice actor of Mario. There you go. Yes. There you go. <clears throat> Favorite band and musician of all time? Uh, the Butthole Surfers. Very, very well-received band in the 1990s. <clears throat> they kind of fell off after that, but yeah. Definitely the Butthole Surfers were really good. <clears throat> Anything else? Are you guys done? Are you guys done? Is that all you have? Come on. I'm ready. I'm ready to take on all comers today. Where, it, where, where are your questions? Come on. This is ridiculous. What kind of showing is this? Is this all you have for me? I'm. Come on. <clears throat> have I ever gone dumpster diving? Actually, no, I never have. Never dumpster dive. Do I like pocket knives? Yes. Just 
Just over here, I have two pocket knives. I got my flip knife, which is very sharp. Got to be careful with this thing. I've used this for many things over the years. It's actually from Beretta. I think it's the same company that makes the handguns. It's Beretta Pocket Knife. Got this over a decade ago and uh, has served me well. Like I said, very, very sharp knife. Um, and then I got my Swiss Army knife, which I've probably used a zillion times over the years for various things. You got, you got your scissors, your screwdriver, you know, your knife, your uh, all kinds of things on this thing. A little wrench. Look at this thing. Yeah, I've probably used this a million times over the years too, right? So, yeah. I always have uh, something near me. I think this also has the uh, flint. I think this has like a flint end if you need to use it to create a spark. Although I've never done that before. It also has a paper cutter or wire cutter right there. It's a blade. So if you need to cut a wire or cut a uh, like a string or a rope, you can use that as a little blade on the edge there. <sighs> Covered in dust. <laughs> yeah. Pretty nice stuff. I use them every once in a while. I don't use them all the time. But I like how you basically just flip it right open like that. It's kind of nice. Very nice. There you go. Okay. Uh, Street Fighter 6 Cammy, that's correct. He says, I became a member. I wanted to see your archive streams, but you don't do those here. That's not how it works here. Here, there's no point to having the archive streams go live fully because... I break them up and upload them every day anyway. So, for example, this podcast is one part that'll go live right after the stream goes offline. The gameplay is always broke up into parts, and that's always uploaded. The reason that I do it differently on DSP Reacts is I don't upload all the content on the day that I stream. You see, for example, today I'm going to do DSP versus the internet. The stream will be archived for members, but then the parts will be like one a day for the over the course of the week. So, if you don't want to wait all week, that's how being a member over there is beneficial. But literally, that's no point. All the videos today will go live on DSP Gaming, so there's no... That's not one of the benefits of being a member. So, I think you mis you misconstrued or didn't understand it. I still appreciate you being a member. Thank you for the support, but... Yeah, that's not something I do here. Okay. Oh, did I know 45% of people are watching YouTube on a TV? No, I did not know that. I thought most people would be watching it on like a mobile device these days. I don't know about a TV. But does it differentiate? Does it differentiate between TV and mobile device? Or do they just think it's an app and it counts it as the same? I don't know. Do I prefer an outhouse or a porta potty? What's the difference? When I think outhouse, I think more like it's old school, like made of wood. Right? Like outdoorsy. When I think porta potty, I think it's more like made of plastic, commercialized, portable for like a construction job or a concert, and then they just move it around. But neither of them are, are good. <laughs> right? Neither of them are ideal for the movement of the bowels. So I wouldn't like either. Right, I'm going to put these back. All right, I received a $2 tip, our first tip of the day. Thank you for this. Uh, glitched. It is from... This is anonymous. It's, it's a me, Mario. Wanted to say thank you for all of the memories, Charles Martinet. Thank you so much for giving me a fantastic voice for over 25 years. Charles Martinet is number one. Woohoo! Shout out to Charles. So there you go, a $2 anonymous tipper. Giving an homage to Charles Martinet and all the voice acting work he has done. This is the early 90s, about 30 years actually. So, awesome. Thank you so much. The $2 tipper, first tip of the day. Okay. Do I remember the Power Stone games? Yes. Do I think Capcom should bring them back? No. That was, those arena style fighter games were something for one period of time but I don't think they would work today today I mean let's be honest they they have elaborated on those and turned them into other style games at this point like like Smash Brothers is probably the evolution of what that game was you know oh Radical Jaws that was you well how dare you not put your name on the tip that's absolutely unacceptable I'm very upset with you <laughs> how dare you not put your name on that tip have I ever shat while on a plane? Yes. I have taken a big steamer 
while on a plane. It's not very comfortable, let me tell you. Those plane bathrooms are, uh, they leave something to be desired. It feels like you're sitting on like a cardboard box or something that could collapse at any moment. And then the plane starts having turbulence. And that's bad news. Would I like to own a replica Resident Evil Stars handgun? No. I don't need any replica guns. Been there, done that. You know, 10 years ago, when I was a prominent YouTuber, rolling in money with nothing to spend it on, I bought a ton of statues, collectibles. <clears throat> I had replica guns. I had a replica Gears of War handgun. I had a replica Gears of War giant Lancer. And I had a ginormous replica Avenger rifle from Mass Effect 3 that lit up and did everything, right? And they're completely worthless. They don't do anything, you know. You know, I'm older now. I'm like, I don't need this stuff in my house. You know, it's junk. <laughs> really, honestly. You know, some people, oh, I have a game room with all this stuff. What are you doing with that exactly? It just sits there. Do you go in the room and spin in place and stare at it? Like, when I bought that stuff, the statues, that is, they were nice because they were prominent in videos. When I would film my vlogs in my home in Connecticut, you'd see the statues behind me. And that was nice to have, like, a scenery for when I was filming. But then it, it very quickly started becoming clutter and became, why do I getting so much? I don't even have them in videos anymore. I'm just buying shit for no reason. And it was essentially became a big waste of time and money and space, and that's why I don't have that shit anymore, you know? No, I don't have any of that stuff anymore. It's all gone. That stuff's been gone for years and years. Long gone. Did I ever play any of the Wario games? Never owned one, but I played them every once in a while. Like, for example, they would have the Wario games set up in the store when they would have, like, oh, here's the Game Boy and here's Wario that comes with it if you buy it now. So I'd play it and I'm like, yeah, it's good. I liked it, but I never actually bought it. I didn't have a Game Boy until way late in its life cycle near the end of the original uh, Game Boy. I had the Game Boy Pocket to play Pokemon Blue, but I never actually bought, like, any games for it. It's just whatever came with it. <clears throat> Lady Charisma says, since I now have a mini PC, have I thought about getting games from GOG? They sell a lot of older PC games, PC games that are DRM free. I mean, here's the thing. Right now, this mini PC is not going to get a lot of use. Just being honest. We're going to have so many hot new releases to play during the fall that everyone's going to want to see me play. That's going to be my focus. But really where I think that mini PC will start to shine, end of the year, early next year, when things start to slow down, the smoke starts to clear from the very busy fall gaming season and now we have time to do stuff so I think the first thing people want to see me do is install Fightcade and try to play fighting game classic fighting games online with my new joystick and stuff and see you know how that goes I don't know I've never tried Fightcade before you know last time I played it wasn't even called Fightcade it was like the mid 2000s you know it'd be interesting to try it you know outside of that I'm absolutely sure there's a million amount of uh games that could be played on that thing and we'll, we'll explore that in the future now that i have the option that's really cool to have that option right <clears throat> no i don't buy physical games anymore i've, I've literally bought uh, virtual you know digital games for the last probably like eight years i couldn't even tell you like i think the last physical game i bought was divinity original sin 2 that's just because it was cheaper to buy physical off amazon than it was to buy digital before then probably the game before them was arms which was a, like a Switch launch title, right? And before then, I think it was that Star Fox game on the Wii U. Those are the last three physical games I bought, if I remember correctly. Like, I don't buy them physically at all. There's a few others I think I got, you know, here or there that were cheaper physical. When was the last time I went to a GameStop? I don't know. I don't go to GameStop to buy games now. I go in there and I browse with my wife and we never buy anything. We just go in and we look at all the junk in the store. Because literally that's what GameStop is now. It's a junk store. You go in there and they've got little pop culture figurines. They've got t-shirts. They've got a mug from a video game. They've got action figures, pins, fucking little, little statuettes and, you know, junk. Knickknacks. You don't go in there to buy games or anything because there's no point. You just get the games digitally, right? <clears throat> anything they're selling in there, a peripheral, a controller, a console, you could literally get it cheaper online anyway. So why would you ever step into GameStop ever? Unless you're just looking to trade in a bunch of stuff and get a few bucks. That's about it, right? <clears throat> oh my god, you guys are bombarding me with questions. Was this a better or worse summer with less downtime games, more modern games? Like I said, this was the summer of Street Fighter, and that was nice to have something high-profile 
exciting and new to play over the summer. Last year was the summer of Retro 2.0 inadvertently. Like, I never even intended for that. And then it just happened to be two, three months of retro games because there was nothing else going on, right? Um, but ultimately, you know, it, it, it's all about how much fun we're having, you know, and, you know, enjoyability. And I had a ton of fun this summer with you guys. So I hope that you guys feel the same. No, I never played Shadow Warrior 3. I know nothing about it. No, I never heard of Legend of Legali. I never heard anything about it. Yes, I think physical games will end someday. There's only amount of time until game publishers say we don't want to make these physical copies anymore. There's too much money and production cost. That's going to happen for sure. <clears throat> Gear 5 Luffy, we had an entire segment about that earlier today. Rewind the podcast and watch and you'll get your answer about Starfield. What store has the best public restroom, in my opinion? No store, restaurants. Restaurants tend to have the best public restrooms. And I've been to a few restaurants that have like these real high-end, uh, fancy, schmancy, really nice-looking restrooms. There's a, there's a, uh, like a Mexican restaurant at the local mall that's a high-end Mexican restaurant, and their bathrooms are like fancy, fancy. They've got the, the, the beautiful sink, you know, they've got the, the freaking, you know, the, the, the the uh, like the the, the uh, urinal the urinal is like the super deluxe urinal all the way down to the ground. He's got like marble accentuations in the bathroom. They got like the luxurious smooth hand soaps that you can have. You know what I mean? Like it's high high end. <clears throat> The villain, I don't even know what that means. He says, do you think Street Fighter Six will nerf damage scaling? What? How do you nerf damage scaling? Damage scaling means that the more that you hit, the more hits in a combo, that the damage is reduced. Therefore, the people aren't losing their 100% life in one combo. How would you nerf that? Make it worse so that it's even more damaging? I mean, there's already characters doing like 70, 80% damage. Do you really think they should be doing 100%? I don't even know what you mean. <laughs> Nerfing the damage scaling. Yes, I'm going to do year-end stuff this year. My Game of the Year awards, as well as the most disappointing games. I do it every year. There's no reason I wouldn't do it this year. No, I've not seen the latest Lego Dragon Gaiden trailer. No, I've not seen a new One Piece show. I don't know what you're talking about. Jeez. Do you have any questions that are pertinent? The stuff that I do, not to say, are you going to play this game? Do you hear that? You're watching the show? No. No. <clears throat> no. Can I sit still for 30 seconds without moving or blinking? Yes, but I choose not to. <laughs> Can we start? If you guys want to, I just switch over to the other channel and set it up. You know, or run a few ads or whatever while I get set up or whatever. I have no plans on stopping playing Street Fighter 6. Don't worry. We're reducing the amount I'm playing it to make room for new releases, but I'm not going to stop playing it. No, I'm not skipping Mortal Kombat based on the beta. I already bought it to get the beta. <laughs> I literally had to buy the game to get the beta. So, no, I'm not skipping it. Will Street Fighter 6 eventually become Friday Night Fights only? Maybe. We have to see how busy we get during this gaming season. Ideally, I'd like to at least play it twice a week on late stream. And obviously, if we could do Friday Nights for Friday Night Fights, I'd like to do that. But you got to understand that games come out on Tuesdays and Fridays. So there may be Fridays where there's like big, big high profile release or double release. And then we can't do Friday Night Fights. So we'd have to change the day. You know, but ideally, I'd like to still play Street Fighter 6 twice a week if possible. I just don't know how possible it's going to be. Okay. <clears throat> or viable, I should say. Which of the DSP retro shirts is my favorite? Looking at these design, I would say the best design, like, the best design overall that's more hip is probably the graffiti design. 
But in my personal preference, it's the Skull King design. Like, I really like how that looks. I like how we had different color schemes. You remember there was like white, red. This is the one that's pink and gray. There's all different color schemes for that shirt. And I like the various different color schemes that we had for that shirt. Because that was actually, that was the best seller of all time. Of all the times, the years that I had the Teespring merch, this was the design that sold the most of anything. This design is nice, but it was my original design from over a decade ago. It's very basic. You know what I mean? Like back then, this is way more elaborate and cool and hip and more modern. And this, of course, is probably the most modern of all of them, right? Okay. Huh. Do I like the Bee Gees? They're pretty good. Their music's pretty good. Yes. Uh, I couldn't tell you what the saddest movie I've ever seen is. I don't remember specifically. I'm 41 years old. I'm sure I've seen many movies. What is an ideal amount of members to have on a channel? Honestly, I don't think there is an ideal amount, right? just being honest here um you know when it comes to levels of support and the like it varies like during slower times of the year this channel usually has roughly around 500 members right when things pick up and we have more big game releases and celebrations sometimes this channel has had over a thousand members and obviously just think about that how much that helps to have that much extra membership that much extra income is huge it helps a ton it really does um, and it takes the pressure off of the daily stream performance when I've got that ongoing level of extra income. Just, you know, being honest here. So, I mean, ideally, it's be the more the better, but it's not like there's any happy medium of this is a better level than this or anything like that. I mean, ideally, would I like to keep 500 members at all times? Yes. But obviously, I would like to have more than that, too, you know? Gatsu says, is there anything I might like to see nominated for the retrospective that hasn't been nominated yet? I don't know because I haven't seen what's nominated. I haven't looked yet. Like I said, I'm probably going to look like tomorrow night because if there's not enough nominations, then I'll probably open it up further for more people to nominate more than two each. Um, but, you know, for me, you know, maybe some fun moments from the, the best playthroughs I've ever done or people say are the best playthroughs I've ever done, the funniest moments, or maybe some good review moments. Maybe some fun vlogging stuff, right? Maybe just showcasing how different my setup used to be or how different things used to be when I lived in different areas and stuff. Maybe watching some fun old DSP tries it that we haven't watched in a long time. Maybe watching some of Project 7 just for old time's sake. Not that I want to watch the whole series, but maybe, you know, watching one of the episodes together and reacting to that. You know, various different things. I've been doing content for so long. There's a wide variety of content to cover there. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Can you still monetize your YouTube like old videos? You know, it all depends. Um, it all depends, and here's what I said. Why I say that. So back in the day, YouTube didn't really care about what you used in your videos, honestly. So, you know, for the first three, four years I was making content, I was using music and stuff. And then one day, in 2013, YouTube flipped the switch and said, oh, content ID is on now. So anyone who's ever had music in their videos is now claimed and you get no ad revenue for the rest of time for those videos. So I've got videos from back in the day that I put tons of time and effort and editing into and I can never monetize them ever again. Someone else is making money on every view on those videos and I have no chance to do anything about that whatsoever. Yeah, and the problem is over the years, this is something that's happened because someone brought something up this morning. They actually said, Phil, why don't you have that Sonic song on your pre-stream music anymore? used to have, you know, the song where you're playing Sonic Generations and you're singing, the, you made up lyrics on the fly or whatever. It was one of your classic intro songs. Why don't you play it anymore? Because here's sadly what's happened on YouTube over the years. Their content ID system continuously keeps applying to content and nine times out of ten, it's wrong. So after having run that Sonic song on my pre-streams for a good five plus years, all of a sudden one day YouTube starts identifying that song as someone else's song and starts giving them the ad revenue for it. Claims my entire stream 
for the fact that I have that Sonic song playing for like two minutes during a five plus hour archive stream and saying all that revenue on that stream went to somebody else. And I'm like, what are you out of your mind? So I started like, you know, debating, what did they call it? Uh, appealing those claims. And every time I appealed the claim, it worked. The problem is it's work. You have to put in the appeal. It could take up to weeks for the appeal to go through. And literally every day I was streaming, my stream was getting claimed and I was losing ad revenue. So I said, it's just not worth it, right? It's just not worth it to even use that song anymore because it's always going to create a problem for me. And it's YouTube's fault because they keep automating their system and running algorithms that don't work and misidentifying content. So because of that, it's just not worth the, not worth the trouble anymore. So I don't use that song ever again. And I get the feeling over time, even though I've been 15 years, I've been making videos. I think someone you know, did, the, did the math and said, you know, Something like so insane amount of content, insane amount of videos that I put out on the internet, correct? What did, what's the statistic? As of today, what's the statistic for the amount of videos I put out? I don't even know. So when I said it's just an incredible amount, okay? But out of all that content, out of the 15 years of my life, how much of that content has been claimed by others? And I, I have no way to know who claimed what, and I have no way to ever get the rights back to it, right? Because you would think, dude, 15 years of content, you must be getting residual views. You must be rolling in dough. No, I'm not. I'm telling you, the, the money that I make from, from ad revenue is ridiculously small compared to what it was. You know? The, just think of it this way. I was making my entire living on views on videos. That was it. There was no Patreon. There was no tips. There was no Super Chats. There was no memberships. There was no other methods of contribution. It was just watch my videos, and as long as there's ads on it, I'm making a good living. And I was making more money back then than I make now, right? And then what happened is, over the years, everything de just degrades. Everything, you know, goes away. Literally says 60, 63,000 videos on DSP Gaming. 7.2 thousand on the old channel, 2,000 on DSP Axe, and 180 something on KO Gaming. So there you go. It's about 72, 73,000 videos I've put out in 15 years. I honestly would wonder how many I still have the rights to. I would bet less than half. Seriously, because the algorithm is so broken. It just gives the rights away to any, any major corporation. It doesn't care. You're not notified, and you have no way to dispute it. It's like, wow, that's nice. You know, If I actually had revenue from all of my videos, I'd probably be, be well off. But they take it away over, over the years. There's nothing you can do about it. No, they're not working on anything to fix any copyrighted music. No, they're not. It's bullshit. <laughs> it really is bullshit. The whole system that they claimed they were going to do was all... They made it up. They claimed they were going to have a music system by which you could buy a membership to this music system and now you could use copyrighted music in your videos. They lied completely. That's not what it is. What it is is it's a per-use basis. So let's say, for example, right now I wanted to make a video and I wanted to use a piece of music in it. So I could pick the music and buy the license to use the music in my video and then that video would never be claimed by that party and I would make revenue on the video but when you look at those licenses they cost hundreds of dollars each so if I was doing a review of Starfield and I wanted to put in <clears throat> I don't know a song from the 1980s in it like a joke I uh, holding out for a hero it would be like $300 to use holding out for a hero in my review of Starfield <laughs> for one use in that video that's it after that, you can't do it anymore, right? So, the whole system's broken. They, they have no intention of fixing it. They never did. They're just looking to make more money. It's pretty fucked up. And the problem is a lot of these, these uh, legit creators and legit musicians are even having their music misappropriated to other parties. I just saw one the other day. It was Dra Dragon Force, I want to say. What, you know, this, this metal band had their own music on YouTube claimed by a third party. So they posted up on Twitter and said, who is this third party claiming you don't own our music? This is false. Remove this immediately. You want to know what YouTube did? They responded to the tweet and said, oh, you're doxing that person. You need to take your tweet down. The person broke the law and erroneously claimed their own musical content and is making money on it. And you're concerned about the person being doxed? That's YouTube's concern. Like I said, YouTube needs to be sued. If YouTube was sued for Content ID, they would lose the case. 
there is way more cases of content ID being completely grossless, grossly misappropriated than actually appropriately applied. They would never win in a court of law if the statistics were actually brought up, but no one wants to sue you two. <clears throat> anyway. All right, guys. I think we've gone long enough. I want to say thanks to those who chill. Thanks to those who did support, obviously. I, I would hope we'll get some good support on the React stream. As you can see, guys, it's been pretty dead. I hope that the React stream will pick up over on DSP Reacts. If you like the React stuff, please support it today, okay? Uh, but I think it's time to adjourn. We got to set up the React stream. We got to get that going. So thanks for watching the podcast, everyone. And uh, please enjoy this, this final week of summer vibes here on DSP Gaming before we head into the busy fall gaming season. I hope that you've enjoyed this awesome summer. I know I have. Thanks for watching. And I will be back shortly with the React show. And of course, tomorrow, another fun podcast. See you then.